Okay, fair warning everybody, um, I haven't watched season three yet, or even totally finished season two, so if anything major happens there, um, we won't get to that, although realistically, it's a slice of life comedy, what could really happen? So, and also, but I wanted to get this out before I get to Comic Con next week, so I'll be doing a big video for that like I did last year, but without further ado, it is time for the Hitamari Sketch Spoiler Review, with... I think he's still alive. But anyways, uh, we will be discussing pretty much the first two seasons. And remember, as always, this is a spoiler review, so we're treating it as if you watched the show with us, so everything is on the table. No complaints about spoilers like the last two times. So anyways, let's get started. Um, I like this show. Do you like it? Are you going to talk? Spoiler review for a TV show, and it's a YouTube video. Okay. Um. Again, it's weird because the thing about Slice of Life Comedies. This is getting creepy. If they're done right, nothing is really important is going on. And I think that's what makes them sort of tough because a lot of people really can't get into them. Like, I know a lot of people who hate Lucky Star, they hate Kaon, and they don't like this too. But I think this is a very acquired taste anime. Like, what did you think? Okay. I mean, it's like, again, um... You're just enjoying causing trouble, aren't you? Okay. Um, cutting short to it. Yeah, I'm really getting into it. The season two subplot of Hero and Psy being... Or Psy having a lesbian crush on Hero, I think Goat is pointless. Are you really shocked by that? I mean, they implied it in the first season. Yeah, but it's like... It's the idea that... And I love... It, you know, it doesn't feel like a gay relationship. It just feels kind of shoehorned. I mean... I haven't watched the second season. In fact, I haven't even watched the final episode of season one. Mm -hmm. um, I personally, I mean, you obviously know that um, Sai has kind of like a love for what's whatever her name Hero. is. Hero. Because like, A, you hear that she like watched over her when she was sick. Mm -hmm. And then like whenever they're together, they're like kind of like flirting almost, or like, like she, or like, Psy is trying to, and she gets all blushed whenever mm -hmm. a hero says something about her and stuff like that. So, obviously it was implied that apparently she does indeed like her um, romantically, but they just never did anything about it. And as what you were saying for the acquired taste, yeah, the anime, in my opinion, was very weird to start out getting into, because mm -hmm. I was originally the one who like most anime, um, decide what we're going to review next. And I, at the time, I only watched the first episode. And as I was going through the episodes, uh, trying to, like, get through season one, because I actually originally thought there was just one season of this anime. So, uh, <clears throat> um, and when I got to around, see, I was kind of debating on even keeping going at it. I was actually really debating on saying to you, you know, honestly, I kind of really don't want to watch this, but I did stick with it, because after the fucking, uh, uh, Log Horizon debacle. Yeah. So you <laughs> barely watched any of it. Still on episode 10. Uh, so, I got to episode, around episode 5, I kind of started, uh, turning around on it. Mm -hmm. You know, trying to, actually, I think episode 5 of the first season is my favorite episode so mm -hmm. far. Just because, A, you know, this anime is not for everyone. You know, the Slice of Life is not for everyone. Mm -hmm. I think my favorite Slice of Life anime was Gekin Shoujo. But that's about, like, yeah. that's about as like, Slice of Life as you can get. The art style is kind of appealing if you like certain um, art, like, if you like this kind of art style. But, you know, uh, the arts, like, the anime itself is kind of hard to watch at times. Not due to, like, awkwardness, like, water mode or art style itself. It's the fact that they just randomly will change mm -hmm. the, like, art of what they're doing. Like, it could be like, oh, now we're in this frame where it's, like, completely red and they're, like, shaded out 
and there's like patterns going by. I get it. It's supposed to be like because they're in an art school. I get that. But you know, if you're not used to that and you've never watched something like that, it's pretty like irritating to watch at times. And after again around season five is when I started warming up to it and you know not really hate not liking it as much. Mm -hmm. I like the different animation. I like that the show is told out of order. I just like the idea that it's experimenting with stuff, especially because season one was in 2007, and I remember a lot of slice of life animes around that time were sort of the lucky star formula. And you compare it to something like uh, Gekin Shoujo Nozaki, it's very different because in most slice of life, so either be like a lucky star or Nozaki, or you want to go even even do American examples like a Seinfeld or a Roseanne. There is still a linear 24-minute story going on. This one, literally, it forgets its own plot within five minutes. Like, the episode title will literally be something, and then it will have nothing to do with anything except a one-minute sentence. Or, like, one example was when they were um, going over, like, the school field day of sorts, mm -hmm. where, like, it, then it started raining and stuff like that. Like, the sports festival. Yeah. Um... I remember at the end of the episode, they're like, okay, well, congratulate, like, you know, good luck at the sports festival. You know, you're expecting that the next episode is going to be the sports festival. The next episode had nothing to fucking do with the sports festival. Yeah. So you're back. like, what the fuck happened to the sports festival? I'm back to, like, winter. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, uh, it's just kind of weird in that regard. And then you and, have... You know, it could be disrupting and, like, kind of annoying to new person who's never watched an anime like this and this is their first experience with a slice of life, I suppose. Yeah. I definitely think if you want to get into slice of life, you should probably just go with like Lucky Star first or Nozaki. I've never watched Lucky Star. You're like the one person on earth who has it. Exactly. Well, yeah, but I think that it's also... I know she's 18 or something. She, she's like 21, right? In Lucky Star? Yeah. Well, no, the joke is that their ages are different each episode. Uh... Like, they're in different school years and stuff, but that was that was the first time something like that was being attempted. This just goes, I think, full folds out. I think that's why I like it, because it's Cause like... Because isn't the blue-haired girl 18? No, the joke is that in the first episode, they're 18, then they're in middle school, the second episode, then they're in high school, but there's no, like, connection to it. It's just whatever they're making fun of that episode, that's the age they are for it to make sense. Uh. But in Lucky Star, it was different, because, again, that was the first time we were really seeing that story concept being implemented... This is different because this was a few years later, and this, I think, takes it to the next level. Because, again, this is literally, the plot will matter for a second, and we're only following that day of their lives. Well, not also to mention, we're also, ha we, all, we also have a very limited, or very small group of cast members of the mm -hmm. show itself. Because there's the main character, Yunochi, you know, who I felt is a kind of Madoka kind of character. Because she has the same, like, Madoka-isms, if you want to call it that. Like, she kind of looks like her. She's shy. She has a group of friends that, you know, is, like, her go-to kind of place. Mm -hmm. And she's, like, out of her comfort zone. Then we have the blonde-haired girl. Mia, who Mia, is my favorite. Uh, uh, yeah, Mia, who I related to the most. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I'm lazy, I'm tired. Generally, the she's the favorite. Yeah. yeah from people to then we have... Whatever the red haired girl is. Hero. Hero. I did not like her at all. If she's not, this isn't like Tomoko levels of annoying. Mm -hmm. It was just the fact that her only joke was that she was self conscious about her weight. And yes, that's a very big thing for young girls. I just felt like there needed to be something more than just she's going to binge eat for a while and then not want to eat anything. I thought you could have done a bit more there. And I think that's the problem with Sai as well. It feels like the series is more interested in just putting Yunochi and Maya in these crazy situations and how they react about it with each other, and then the other two just sort of show up. And then we have the comic relief characters, such as their teacher. I don't like the teacher. The teacher kind of did get annoying after a while. Yeah. I gotta admit, one character I thought I was gonna hate, but as time went on, I actually started laughing at what he was doing was the principal. He's great. I, originally, when I first started watching, I thought I was gonna hate the principal immediately. And he's just going to be a completely boring, flat character. Mm -hmm. As time went on, I was like, "Ha, huh, that's funny." Like when, like in during like the cut scenes, like it's like, "Oh man, it's summertime. Summertime is good for blah. Summertime is good yeah. for blah." And it's like fall is good for. And it's like I thought that was pretty funny. Well, it's like 
I think the teacher, when it comes to the two teacher characters, what makes one work, at least for me, what makes the, t the principal work and the teacher not work, is that with the principal, you still understand what kind of person he is. With the teacher, I don't understand why she's a teacher or why no one has fired her when she's saying she'll pose nude for students. Mm -hmm. Like, I just feel like she she's that annoying. And she doesn't make any sense. Like, the first episode of season two, I was like, she, basically the sub, the plot going on is that she want, she sends a love letter to Hero claiming she's a boy in love with Hero and then sends it to another boy claiming she's Hero to see if anything like that will happen between them. That's really <laughs> inappropriate. Mm. Like, to the point where I feel like anyone would be like, okay, yeah, you need to leave, you're going to get us sued. And I just think it was funny because, again, like with Saya and Hero, it's the same joke over and over again. And again, I'm not against lesbian subplots or anything like that. I mean, look, if you can add diversity like that, the more the better. But it just sort of felt like we needed something for these two to do, so we'll just make one of them gay out of nowhere. Like, you take something like, I remember you had Akame Got Kill, which has a gay character in it. And with him, you know, just right off the bat, oh, he's gay, but he's also this and he's that. When it came to the gay element, it felt like they came up with it, so therefore it needs to be in every scene. Like, the opening to season two is just all showing side being in a hero. And there's even an entire episode dedicated to it. And I don't think it works for this style of storytelling. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, when you have to go back and forth within the year, you can't focus on developing the relationship because the concept is, is that they all just meet and get along because they're around each other. And that works for the most part. Like, again, he, uh, Maya and Yunochi, you really, there's a lot of chemistry going on. Like, the thing is, yes, it's very simple character origins, and we don't learn a ton, but we really don't need to. Because of the idea that they are these very basic, normal girls, and they are getting along so well. And again, this show as a whole, it almost feels like, did you get the sense that it's almost like the television show version of just someone doodling about their day at the end of the day? Because, I mean, look, every episode ends with, you know, she's the bat. So. Yeah, that's true. That is sort of weird. I think I think she's. Te I think technically we've seen more naked girls in this anime than anything we've talked about so far because of that. Well, I mean, they didn't show anything. Yeah, and it's not played up for anything sexual. Like this is clearly meant for girls, but I think it's played up in a way that guys can appreciate it too. Mm. Although it does get weird because I saw a manga chapter where literally they all just want to touch Maya's breasts because they're so much bigger than everyone else's. So mm. that's weird. But again, you can get away with it in something like that, because it is going for very much an offbeat, very non-normal way. And I like that. It takes risks. It tries to do something different. It expects the audience to be intelligent enough to go along with it. And I think we need more anime like that. I mean, again, is this the best slice of life comedy ever? No. Do, did I laugh at all the jokes? No. Do something fall flat? Yeah, but what it's trying and what it's attempting to do, I think is more than worth giving it. Again, if it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work. Because, you know, when something does take risks like that, that's what's going to happen. But when all's said and done, I'm glad I watched this. I had a really good time. It may not have the forward momentum that makes me want to keep watching, but, you know, when all's said and done, I had a good time. Did you? So, yeah, what would you rate this? I'm going to go, and maybe my scores will change when I get through a bit of season three and all that stuff. I'm going to go eight. I'm the higher one for once. I know. Well, that and the Black Lagoon review. But no, it's just that I think that, you know, Wait, I'm... What did, I, what did I give? Black? You gave Black Lagoon an eight. I did? Yeah. Oh. No, but I mean, it's just like, again, I think I appreciate what this show is really going for, and it is very clever, and it is very witty. I just think certain things like the psi element of it and the lesbian stuff. Anytime it gets into generic stuff, I think there's a problem. Damn! Thanks, computer. So, anyways, um, but what did you think about Hitamari Sketch? In the comment section below, talk about it as much as you want. Say anything or any other sort of anime that you like that plays around with storytelling. And, as always, click to like and click to subscribe. And if you'll be at New York Comic Con on Thursday, I'll be there. Come say hi. And what day are you going to be I'm there? I'm going to be there on Friday. So come say hi to him. And buy us hot dogs. Like anyone would. <laughs>